Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. As we continue down the world history path, this time taking a look at another religion with 2.4 billion followers, it's gonna win the award for number one followed religion, it's Christianity. So let's take a look at the basic story, basic beliefs of Christians, and see if we can't do some of the giddy up for the learning. How about that, kids? All right, let's go get her done right now. Alright guys, why don't we tell the basic backdroppings in terms of a little bit of historical context. And of course, this is a video on religion that's not supposed to be religious. So a lot of your comments down below are going to flesh this out in terms of historical accuracy and what different types of Christians believed and yada yada yada. But we are going to start in 63 BCE in the kingdom of Judea right there. And of course, Judea is occupied by people that are Jewish. And it is this time period that Judea is going to fall under Roman influence at first. It's still going to be an independent kingdom, but it's pretty much being led by Romanized Jews like Herod. Um, it's upon Herod's death that there's going to be a rebellion, and that's the time period when Jesus of Nazareth is born in Bethlehem. But eventually that rebellion is going to be squashed, and the Romans are going to take over Judea. And they're basically going to give a lot of the control over religious matters to Jewish court that's called the Sanhedrin. Most Jewish people during that time period were split into two camps. There were people that wanted to fight the Romans, rebels that wanted to throw them out, and there were people that were seen more as zealots, people that were awaiting what the Old Testament said would be the Messiah. God would send a Messiah to allow the Jews to gain control of that land again and bring peace on earth. So that's kind of the context that we have the birth of Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus of Nazareth was born in Bethlehem, and not much is known about his early life and his teenage years, but it's said at the age of 30 that he starts a public ministry. And prior to that, he had been baptized by John the Baptist, and that is an historically pretty agreed upon event. And of course, John John the Baptist was a Jewish person, and it is said that he foretold really the coming of Jesus by baptizing him. So that's a very important story in the Christian faith. But nevertheless, at the age of 30, Jesus of Nazareth is going to start a public ministry, and he's basically a Jewish priest at that time period. He's traveling around, he's talking about monotheism, he's talking about the Ten Commandments, but he's also doing this new type of spin about how people can really have a personal relationship with God. And that's one of the underpinnings, the foundations of Christians' belief. And there's also a lot of teaching of love and forgiveness and um, looking out for the poor and the weak and the meek. The meek shall inherit the earth. So that's a lot of Jesus' teachings. And of course, he's going to have miracles under his belt according to the Gospels. We'll talk about the miracles in the next section of the video. But it's important to understand that everything that I'm saying is coming from the first four books of the New Testament. And if you're a Christian, you believe in the Old Testament, all the good stuff about the Ten Commandments and Adam and Eve and all that stuff, but you also believe in the New Testament, which is made up by a lot of different sections and books, but the first four are called the Gospels, Mark, Matthew, John, and Luke, whose stories, whose narratives are going to make up the four Gospels. The Gospels were written probably around 60 or 70, um, you know, decades after the death of Jesus of Nazareth, but this is where this narrative is really coming from. So during this time period, about two to three years, Jesus of Nazareth is doing his public ministry. He's gaining a following along with his 12 apostles. There's also a woman who travels with him, Mary of Magdalene. It's said that Jesus exercised seven demons from her. She's a constant companion as well. She's mentioned 12 times in the gospel, more than any other woman in the gospels. And Jesus of Nazareth is also promising something that is pretty hopeful for a lot of people. He is promising eternal eternal life, that if people follow him, that if they wash themselves of their sins, that they can have eternal life with the Heavenly Father. Most Christians, and we'll talk about beliefs in a second, believe in the Holy Trinity, that it is the Father, the God, the Son, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, what they'll say, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. That's the sign of the cross. But after a couple of years of ministry, Jesus of Nazareth came to Jerusalem in order to prophesies in order to grow his faith. And in around the year 29, after a couple years of having this public ministry, Jesus of Nazareth goes to Jerusalem, where he is seen by many people of Jerusalem as being the Messiah. And this is a problem for the Romans. The governor at that time period was Pontius Pilate, and Pontius Pilate saw Jesus of Nazareth as a threat. 
The Romans see Jesus of Nazareth as a threat to stability, as somebody that is rocking the boat, and they want to say to him, don't rock the boat, baby. And these are the conditions that create the context for what is going to be the crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth. Now, the story is that prior to him being arrested and tried, he had a last supper with his 12 apostles. At that time period, Judas, one of the apostles, is said to have betrayed Jesus by going to the Sanderin and turning him in for 30 silver pieces. And at that time period, he's arrested. He is then sentenced to be crucified. And Christians believe that he was uh, had a crown of thorns that were put on him, that he was given poison to drink mixed with wine, that he rejected that, that he was made to carry his own cross and eventually be crucified by having his ankles and his hands nailed to this cross between two thieves. It is believed that he was on the cross for about six hours before he died. Then Roman soldiers were said to put a spear through his side to make sure that he was dead. He was Then he was put into a tomb. It was said three days later later, he was resurrected, that his body was gone. And during this time period, he visited the apostles. He basically told them to tell the world what happened. And then he ascended into heaven. Now, following the death of Jesus of Nazareth, Christianity is going to spread pretty slowly at first, but it's going to be allowed to be spread through Pax Romana, that there was this ability to travel throughout the Roman Empire, along with having a Roman road system, having a common language of Greek and Latin, is going to allow this faith to spread. And it had a, a very wide attraction for the poor. Um, anybody could become a Christian. You didn't have to have wealth. And in a sense, it is promising to people that join it eternal life and salvation if they wash themselves of sins. Now, following the death of Jesus of Nazareth, you're also going to have further Jewish rebellions. There's a Jewish rebellion in Judea in the year 70 and 130, where the Romans are going to crush the Jews. They're going to kill over a million of them and eventually exile all of the Jews out of that land of Judea. Now, we also have the persecution of Christians. Christianity is a uh, challenge to the Romans. The Romans have their own pagan religion, and they're seen as being rebels and people that need to be gotten rid of, especially under Emperor Nero, who had the apostles Peter and Paul executed. And of course, Christians are going to be fed to the lions. They're going to be exiled. They're going to be harassed for many, many years. But nevertheless, Christianity continues to spread. More and more Romans are becoming Christians. And it's going to take the emperor Constantine in the year 312, where it said he had a vision of a cross in the sky. He put the cross on all of his soldiers' uh, gear, and he won a big battle. And then eventually he accepted Christianity. And in fact, in the year 300, Christianity is going to become the official religion of Rome. Now, of course, I've left out a million things, but that's the basic idea. Now, let's talk about some of the basic beliefs of Christians. Jesus Christ was a man that traveled through the land, hard-working man and brave. He said to the rich, give your goods to the poor. So they laid Jesus Christ in his grave. All right, we're probably not going to go over every belief of every Christian, and certainly we want to make sure that we all understand there's many different types of Christians, many different sects of Christianity. But the basic belief of most or all Christians is that Jesus was sent by God. He is the Son of God. He was born of the Virgin Mary, and that he is the Messiah that is foretold in the Old Testament. That Jewish people believe the Old Testament tells of the forecoming of a Messiah. And people that are Christian believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And people that are Jewish believe that Jesus Christ was not the Messiah. He was also said to be sent to cleanse the sin of man. That man is born with sin. And that because Jesus died on the cross and suffered in hell for three days before he was resurrected, that he did that to cleanse man of sin. But in order to be a Christian, you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. And that might be the one differentiation with other religions. Other religions don't really believe that you have to accept their faith in order to be saved. If you're a Christian, you must accept Jesus, and that's the only way to get to the kingdom of heaven when you die. Most Christians believe that if you don't accept Jesus Christ, that when you die, you will not be able to enter the kingdom of heaven. That's a big difference between Christianity and many other religions that people practice. People that are Christian also believe that Jesus will return one day, that that will be judgment day. We didn't talk about all the books of the Bible, but the last book is Revelations, which tells of basically a day where the world ends and that Jesus will be 
sent to save all of the people that believe in him. So there's a lot of faith in Christianity that you must have faith in Jesus in order to be saved. Another big aspect of being a Christian, other than accepting Jesus for eternal life, is that you need to live that life while you're on earth like Jesus did. You need to love not only God, not only yourself, not only other Christians, but also your enemies as well. The turn your other cheek idea, kind of the idea of pacifism and peace and love and being humble and helping the poor. That's another huge idea in Christianity. And there's also a conversion aspect. Christians believe that it is their job to save other souls. If the only way to enter the kingdom is to accept Jesus Christ, then you need to make sure you spend your time on earth saving as many people as you can. Now, of course, Christians also believe that Jesus is not just a prophet. He's not like Muhammad in Islam or gurus in Hinduism. He is actually the son of God. Now, Jewish people reject that. They believe that he was, if anything, a prophet or a false prophet. But people that are of the Islamic faith believe that Jesus was a great prophet. And if you read the Quran, it foretells at the end of the world that it will be Jesus that comes back and rules over the world. Muslims believe that. They even have a space next to their prophet Muhammad that's awaiting the body for Jesus of Nazareth, if you can believe that. And of course, there's also a belief that Jesus performed miracles, that he cured the blind, that he cured lepers, that he raised the dead, that he turned water into wine, that he walked on water, that he fed thousands of people with only having a loaf of bread and a small amount of wine. So part of being Christian is faith, that you believe the gospels, that you believe that Jesus was the Messiah and that you have accepted Jesus as your personal savior so you can have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. So that's the basic story. I know I left out everything. Did I leave out everything? I left out everything. So you can leave that down in the comments below. We hope your brain's a little bit bigger and we certainly hope if you want to know more, you go find out more. And if you want to know about more religions, go down to the playlist below. We've done six of them so far. How about that? All right, guys, that's all I got for you. I say it at the end of every lecture because I believe it with all of my heart. Retention goes, energy flows. We'll see you guys next time you press my buttons.